Hello and welcome again to another edition of Iron Port, uh, the program that has been designed to bring Ghana's ports and maritime industry closer to you. It is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Goyo PLC Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Meridian Port Services, and Phoenix Insurance. Iron Port is powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, and our media partner is the Business and Financial Times. Viewers, um, you can recall that in recent weeks we've been making a little noise about um, some 15 state-of-the-art gantry cranes that have been received um, here in the Terminal 3 at the port of Tema to boost productivity and efficiency. Uh, coming on the back of that this week, we had a conversation with the Chief Executive Officer of Meridian Port Services to touch on how um, investments and decisions like uh, the acquisition of these state-of-the-art gantry cranes and more is positioning the port of Tema um, to become the container hub of West and Central Africa. He had a lot to share with us. Take a listen. I just wanted to tell us about the new cranes that you brought in, 15 of them. Yeah. And we know that these are capital intensive investments that you are making. Yeah. Um, the price of one crane is, is no mean, you know, is. is the, the, this investment is $55 million. For the 15. For the 15. $55 price. million. Dollars. Yes. Right. Tell us about that. And uh, uh, these cranes are uh, uh, the most advanced, actually, cranes uh, yeah. uh, in the market at the moment. Uh, uh, they can; they are capable of handling, you know, um, you know, just about all types of vessels in the world. We can handle ten over deck, and also we can go out to sixty meters on the outreach. Mm. That's reaching the twenty-third row on board a ship. Right. So a ship with eighteen thousand TEU. Uh, capacity, we can mm. easily handle it, you know, mm. within these cranes and efficiently as well. Mm. So um, up to 20,000 TEU vessels, I think we can actually assume that we are capable of handling it with no hiccup or no glitch or, or nothing, you know. Mm. Which is the biggest uh, vessel you have ever handled in terms of TEU? Um, in terms of TEUs, it's the 14,000 or 15,000 TEU class that mm. is currently on service. Right. At the moment, we have one service from MSC, which uh, I show it, uh, saw it on the uh, uh, program earlier, the ones who launched the biggest vessel yes. in the world. Yes. Uh, they have a weekly service with uh, 14,000 TEU class vessels. Mm. Those ships are 366 meter long and about 51 meter wide. Mm. And they're capable of carrying 14,000 20 foot wow. containers. Wow. And uh, uh, we, just actually uh, uh, received the announcement from uh, the joint service between Maersk and CMA CGM yes. that they have uh, revamped their service into West Africa. Right. And they have launched uh, uh, or uh, geared up with 13 vessels of the same class, right. the 60, 366 meter long, right. uh, to put on uh, the Far East West Africa trade. Right. And with Tama Port is the first port of call. Awesome. Basically, the ship leaves mm. uh, TPT in Malaysia, the last hub in Malaysia, yes. and lands in Tama after 21 days, which mm. is the shortest transit time for any port in Africa, Africa. with the Far East. And that is quite uh, uh, an achievement, Absolutely. you know, uh, enabled by this infrastructure at uh, Terminal 2. Yes. Uh, at, sorry, at Terminal, Terminal 3, three. Yes. Phase 2. Right, awesome. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the yard space, I know you're working on a yard, spe yard, yard space, you know, um, can you tell us when work on it is supposed to be completed? The first uh, uh, section, you mm. know, uh, is slated to be delivered in July next year. Mm. So in July uh, next July year, 2024. 24, we mm. will receive 50,000 square meter. Okay. And then from there, we will every um, until September 2025, you know, we will complete the. Uh, entire That's September area. 2025. Yes. Okay. But in 20 you complete the, the entire yard? The entire, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So um, let's, let's take a look at um, the capacity. You mentioned 3 million. Is that what you refer to uh, when uh, you finish this particular space? Yes. Okay, then you would be able, capable of receiving uh, 3 million. Uh, 3.5 you know, million. 3.5 million. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And which will put us on the map that the biggest port in. So West if that's Africa. going to happen, we are we are thinking about September 2025. Yes. When you finish the space, and then we can accommodate. Uh, this, Up to this three capacity. and a half million. Wow, three and a half million 
containers. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's move on. How? Um, let's talk about technology. Uh, how deep is the technological penetration? Uh, you know, in MPS. Well, this is uh, uh, this is interesting. Um, in Terminal Two, when we operated Terminal Two, mm. uh, the digital penetration was varying from month to month between 3 to 5%. Okay. But when we moved into Terminal 3, we took with us the whole entire stakeholder on a journey, you mm. know, where we have set up the digitalization to hit 100%. Mm. And uh, guess what? From uh, the time that we launched, early 2020 to date, we've been hitting 100% digital penetration with all of our stakeholders. 100%? 100%, literally. From the onset, we have uh, uh, rolled out mm. the digitalization, the full digitalization in the terminal. Yes. And uh, we did not go for automation. Mm. There's a difference between digitalization and automation. Automation, automation we replace the man, mm. man being as man or woman, you know, yes. with a machine. You know, right. We didn't do that. Right. But we put the digitalization, you know, to enhance the operation of the worker. Right. You know, the, 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 the productivity of the vessel, the productivity of the gate. Yes. Going into millions of TEUs, you need to have some kind of efficiency. You mm. start counting seconds. Mm. The truck turn around today in, uh, uh, in our port from the time that truck enters MPS to the time to exit, excluding the customs inspection on the import cycle is less than one hour. It's yes. about 40 minutes. Mm. On the export cycle, is 20 minutes. Right. For the ICDs, it's 30 minutes. Mm. So it's quite an efficient process. Driver turns up only with his fingerprint and an RFID mm. identification on his windscreen. Mm. You know, every driver is a pre-registered known person to the terminal and every truck is a pre-registered machine known to the terminal. Mm. And when a customer or a, through his freight forwarder books to pick or drop a box, he says that Peter is coming with truck number 1.2 to drop this container or pick this container. Yes. By approaching the gate in his time slot, you know, the RFID reads the truck, the LPR, license plate recognition, Double checks the license plate. Yes, it is the correct truck, and he has an appointment. Peter mm. puts his finger into this. Yes, Peter is coming on that truck to he pick or green. drop. He should go, yeah. And then opens up, he drives through. Mm. We have six scanners. Mm. Drive through, not stop, take a picture. Yes. No, just drive like through, blue. just like your briefcase on a conveyor at an airport. Yes. You know, The truck drives at a speed of five kilometers. He goes through the scanner, mm. and then from there, the customs officer mm. who gives the verdict, right. he sees the content, the shades of what's inside the mm. container, mm. and the declaration from customs is read through the OCR, the optical character recognition inside the scanner, reads the container mm. number, and then sends a query to the customs system, say, what's the declaration? It comes back, and then that declaration is embodied on the picture mm. to give the customs officer immediately a, a declaration versus what's inside the box. And from there, he proceeds. Every container has a digital location in the terminal. Right. We, don't, we don't just stack containers. So when you are in the office and you say you want container number so, so and so and so, you know where exactly it is. Exactly. That toss the terminal so operating system. you're not, not going to begin to search. Exactly. And steps through and waste time As and all As the driver that. drives through, mm. we know that he's coming to pick that container. Mm. The gate gives him a note. The terminal is divided into three sections, mm. one, two, three, and soon it will be four right. with, the, with, the, with the launch of yes. uh, phase two. Yes. And uh, then there is letters from A to P. That's the various bays. Mm. And then there is a number based on the ground slots. Right. And basically, it will be given him one D25. He goes to zone one. D turns right, drives up to 25. All the writings are on the floor or yeah. on the wall. Mm. He stops, then the container is landed on his back, then he drives out. Mm. All this process without interaction, man and, uh, and operator, you know, yes. it's just this. And on the exit, there is electronics that will check him as well mm. to make sure that he has collected the right container mm. in reverse order. Goes to the uh, customs uh, scanner, scans. If he's on green channel, he proceeds, non fate. Yeah. Mm. If he's on red channel, he scans and goes for the inspection platform. If mm. he's on a yellow channel, 
he scans and stops for verdict. Mm -hmm. Verdict green, he proceeds to gate. Verdict red, he goes to customs mm -hmm. uh, for further inspection on the intrusive platform. Right. Now, would you say this was a cue you are taking from, you know, the port authority or government uh, premised on the quest of, uh, you know, government to go paperless, where the vice president issued that directive in 2017. Was that where you took the cue from, or this was just a normal practice that you thought that you should undertake to make your, your, your terminal efficient? Actually, the, uh, uh, we were, in all fairness, we were relatively digitalized in Terminal 2. Okay. Until the day that uh, His Excellency the Vice walked in and he said, how far are you in digitalization? Yes. And we said internal procedures within the company is digital. Our interactions with the customers is not necessarily totally digital. You know? Right. And he said, I want it for a digital. Right. And from the onset, you know, <laughs> we put the foot down and we went all the way out. Yes. So basically... Uh, Yes, it is the initiatives of the government that uh, drove the process yeah. to success. All right, so initially you drew the dichotomy between uh, training, uh, between digitalization and automation, uh, where you mentioned the fact that, yes, you just didn't, uh, as it were, uh, replace human beings with machines, yeah. uh, you know. And I just want to find out from you how or what role human capital plays in all of this and the, the kind of training programs that you organize for your personnel and staff at MPS Terminal 3. I mean, uh, uh, the human capital, as you quite rightly put it, is, is the main capital. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, it is key, mm. you know, because uh, um, we need to be uh, precise and we need to run with precision and we need to uh, uh, increase productivity. So basically that does not happen if, if the team is not trained to work together. Mm. Uh, in the past, we used to have... Uh, 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 Four men in the yard, you know, with a whistle and a walkie-talkie shouting, ushering traffic, this and that. Today, we don't have that. You know, we have people sitting in office behind computers looking at uh, CCTV and uh, also the 3D matrix. Every ship that comes into the port mm. at MPS, we have a 3D uh, model of the vessel. And all the storage on that vessel is known to us, every box, where it is on board the ship. Mm. And in the yard, is exactly the same. Right. So what we do, we don't run operation uh, uh, like in the conventional, old-fashioned way. Mm. We actually execute plans. Right. So the team, we have an execution team, which is, in the old terms, is called the operation team. Yeah. And we have a planner who plans the operation. Mm. Basically, no job is being executed on the terminal based on an initi initiative. Mm. It's based on a plan. And those planners, you know, they play a major role in the, in the operation. Mm. To reach to that level of sophistication, you need constant training. Training on the terminal uh, operating system, training on the logic, having SOPs, having proper uh, uh, SOPs is you write it once, but uh, is it really written for life? No, it has to be a life document and has to be continuously tweaked. You know, operation will tweak it, but also we have... Uh, launched this year a serious training that where the whole entire company has been onboarded on uh, something uh, known uh, in the professional world as lean mm. uh, uh, methodology of uh, operations and basically every individual of our workforce is uh, uh, an onboarded lean uh, uh, individual and the management team the first actually uh, lot has already graduated and the management team actually will be graduating next week mm. on the lean program lean right. is about cutting cost and uh, uh, cutting waste and improving service to the end user which is the customer mm. and that's what we're doing so uh, we know that the, the port continues to thrive uh, every year you know and uh, you turn around uh, you know vessels in record time uh, year on year you've uh, you know met or exceeded the one year, uh, one uh, million, uh, you know, uh, TEU Indeed. threshold. Uh, we just want to find out from you. There is, you know, economic challenges globally, but you know we keep on maintaining the momentum that we have in the port of Tema. Uh, thanks to you. Uh, what that, what's, thanks what's the to secret? the team and thanks to the environment that Absolutely. we work in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let, what's the secret? Uh, 
I mean, the recipe is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, I can't say it on TV because then everybody will know. <laughs> It is like selling your business plan, right? Not or really, not at all, not yes. at all. Okay. Uh, 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 the recipe could be the recipe for any business. Mm. You know, it's uh, it's to have a strategy. You right. know, to to know your customer and how your customer reacts to things. You know, yes. and to provide really value. Mm. We don't sell rates. We don't sell cheap uh, product. We sell very, very, very good product that add value to the shipping line. You know, I mean. Uh, in Terminal 2, the last good year of Terminal 2 was 730,000 TEU. And when we moved to Terminal 3 mm -hmm. in uh, uh, 2020, almost that year we hit the million uh, uh, barrier. And in 2021, we moved to one and a half million. Mm -hmm. So in less than a year of operation, we doubled the volume of Ghana. Yes. From, ha from three, qu three quarters to a million to one and a half. Right. But what did we do there? It wasn't all organic growth of the economy. economy yeah. You know, it was also transshipment. Right. We have attracted trade between China and some countries that have challenges that could not take the big ship, where the big ship came to us and then we transshipped the cargo to neighboring, you know, ports. Okay, yes. That's one. But also one big thing, trade between China and Brazil. The West Africa run from the Far East had a capacity, and one of the lines decided that, oh, why not I fill it up with Brazilian cargo, instead of having a service to go to Brazil, I'll bring it to West Africa, and the cross-Atlantic service will pick from West Africa since to Brazil. Mm. So we've created here, you know, an intercontinental hub, another right. line, you know, they were exporting citrus mm. fruits, for example, from right. Cape Town in South Africa, Africa, to Europe. Mm. And they have a service coming from the Middle East around the Cape, mm. you know, and they have a service that comes from Europe and both crisscross in Tama. Mm. So then the Middle East via Cape service picked up the orange containers mm. into Tama, right. dropped it, and a day later, the Europe service docked in Tama. We loaded it with the citrus that came from Cape Town to take to Europe. So we became, again, a hub for Europe here. Right. This, this model was never done wow. because of port capabilities, mm. because of depth, size of vessels, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And at the moment, we, are, we have signed up for a complete you know, service, two feeder vessels, weekly service, mm. into Cotonou, and they swing into Lagos uh, periodically. Yes. You know, and to carry almost 300,000 containers per annum, wow. and that has pushed it. And with this new service of CMA CGM, yes. we're gonna see some big transshipment because this mega ship mm. is gonna come to Tama, yes. cannot go to the smaller ports, mm. it's gonna go to Liki in Nigeria, then yes. from there to Abidjan, mm. and then out. You know, So basically, there's three ports of call. Yeah. So the other ports, where are they going to transship for? Tama will be the ideal situation because we are the first port of call. We have the draft, we have the capabilities, and yes. the ship can lighten up in Tama. Awesome. So viewers, you heard it here first. The port of Tama will soon become the first port of call for vessels plying the west coast of Africa um, under a CMA CGM mask arrangement. And like Mohamed Samara just said, this portends very well for Ghana's maritime trade. Now let us hear from you on your comments on the subjects we have just discussed after we go on break, and then we'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. MPS Terminal 3 is testament to good public-private partnership in Ghana. The port in Tema is a beautiful sight to behold as a Ghanaian. This is Kingsley from Tema. How I wish the investment in sea and airport infrastructure in Ghana is supported by good roads and rail networks because without it, the supply chain is broken. I want to see these investments stretch out to our roads and rail networks. This is Maxwell from Kotobabi. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, are they come? Shut up! Mommy, for the time, come on, Boss, 
fill my tank with Super XP Raw 95. Fill up with Super XP Raw 95 and Diesel XP high performance products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey, go for that boy, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your known tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS. We connect. You thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302 246 319 or 0243 690 492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. Welcome back, viewers. Now, let us pick a few local stories from our ports and shipping industry. The ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance Scheme was established to facilitate seamless trade and travel within ECOWAS member states, ensuring that the movement of goods, services, and people is safeguarded by a reliable insurance framework. The main objective of the scheme is to ensure prompt and fair compensation to the victims of road accidents for the damages caused them by non-residing motorists traveling from other ECOWAS member states to their country. Last week, the 39th General Assembly and Ordinary Session of the Council of Bureau of the ECOWAS 
Kuwa's Brown Card Insurance Scheme was held in Accra, Ghana to take stock and reflect on successes and challenges encountered during the implementation of the insurance scheme. The four-day event centered on how the insurance scheme can be positioned as a specialized institution or agency of the ECOWAS Commission for effective free movement and trade facilitation. The chairman of the Ghana National Bureau, Henry Bukhari, during the opening ceremony described the ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance Scheme as a hallmark of regional integration. Their brilliant work and dedication have not only steered our team towards success, but have also laid down the foundation for an enduring legacy that will benefit generations to come. It is under this guidance that we have seen the flourishing of initiatives and ideas that have now been transformed into reality, enriching the lives of those we serve. Acting Commissioner of Insurance, Michael Kofiando, called upon all insurers and bureau to adhere to provisions of regulatory frameworks. The advent of automatic ground card issuance promises a more efficient settlement process. Yet, we must not become complacent. Proper reinsurance arrangements are also essential to sustaining this momentum, guaranteeing timely settlement. We call upon the motor underwriting companies to honor the obligations with the same zeal, irrespective of where the claim originates. The Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Shelley Ayokobochi, represented by Head Deputy Mavis Nkansa Buedu, charged the Council of Bureau for the ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance Scheme to address the challenges facing the implementation of the scheme to further facilitate and enhance trade and movement of people in the sub-region. Several years down the line, some challenges have arisen, which includes frauds in the acquisition of the certificates at the borders, frauds in the settlement of claims, delays in the settlement of claims, inadequate funding for the National Bureau, and lack of public awareness and education, and amongst others. These issues have hindered the smooth functioning of the scheme and have negatively impacted its effectiveness in facilitating seamless travel and trade within the ECOWAS member state. In a related development, the chairman of the Council of Bureau of the ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance Scheme, Henry Bukhari, has disclosed that plans are advanced to begin the digitalization of the ECOWAS Brown Card, an initiative that will be central during his tenure. He made this revelation during a meeting with the press on the sidelines of the 39th General Assembly and Ordinary Session of the Council of Bureau of the ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance Scheme. My tenure will be focusing on digitalization, digitalizing the, the Brown Card. Within the various bureaus or countries, there are some, some level of work has been done. Ghana, we are digitalized through the National Insurance Commission. You, once you buy your insurance, you get your, your ECOWAS brand card automatically. We have about seven to nine countries that have gone through that process. But we want to make sure that all the 14 uh, West African states come on board and then we can link up our systems. The permanent secretary of the ECOWAS Brown Card Insurance Scheme, Winfred Kwesi Doji, explained what digitalization of the Brown Card will mean for transit business through the ports of Ghana. Goods move from the harbor to the hinterland countries or the landlord countries, and the vehicle upon which they travel is a Brown Card. So, as Chairman said, with a digitalized process, it means easier accessibility to Brown Card, verification becomes easy. It clear out the bottleneck, and when there is an accident, quicker process of claims, the goods will reach their destination on time. The Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders gave is calling for a collaborative effort between the Ghanaian government and industry stakeholders to address challenges facing the freight forwarding business. This, they believe, will create an enabling environment that does not only comply with international standards but also promotes the seamless flow of goods and fosters economic growth for the nation. Addressing the press conference in Tema, the president of GIVE, Edward Akron, said one of the foremost issues freight forwarders face is that of valuation of goods by the customs division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Eddie Akron said it's a worry for the customs division of GRA to create a certain minimum value or reference price list for valuation purposes. Several importers have been saddled with this imposition, like I said, even though they have provided all evidence of the genuineness of their values. All of this adds to the high cost of doing business in our ports and also a direct effect on the cost of goods in our markets. So we urge 
a serious reconsideration of this policy to align with international standards, fostering a conducive environment for trade. The GIF president said there was a need for the customs division to take a look at some issues that are cropping up as a result of the implementation of the interconnected systems for the management of goods in transit, SIGMAT. The SIGMAT system is predominantly a transit verification and assurance one. Now, the customs division has, however, made it mandatory for direct exports into Ghana to be bonded, a situation which is an anathema to customs export procedure, leaving every export declaration hanging as though the process has not been completed, thus creating room for these same officers blocking the systems of the Customs House agent at will for what seems to be an incomplete operation, but it's not. He advocated for a thorough review of the exemption law to ensure that it serves its intended purpose without obstructing the essential movement of goods, particularly those crucial to government operations. Edia Kron called for a collaborative approach between the government and industry stakeholders to formulate policies that are not only responsive to current global dynamics, but also supportive of the growth and sustainability of the freight forwarding sector. We appreciate the government's commitment to the prosperity of the nation and are confident that with open dialogue and a shared vision, we can overcome these challenges and build a resilient and thriving freight forwarding industry in our country, Ghana. Let us now turn our attention to the global stage and pick a few international shipping and maritime related news. Mediterranean shipping company, MSC, the biggest shipping company in the world, has named its newest 24,000 plus TEU fuel efficient container ship. On November 20, 2023, the 24,116 TEU MSC Celestino Maresca was named at Italy's largest port, Gioia Taro. The MSC Celestino Maresca is the namesake of MSC's new class of record breaking vessels. The new build has a capacity of over 24,000 TEUs, making it one of the world's largest and most sustainable vessels. The vessel honors Captain Celestino Maresca who joined MSC in 1978 and founded MSC Ship Management Office in Sorrento and it stands as a testament to Maresca's contribution to the company. Singapore-based shipping company Ocean Network Express has placed an order for 12 new methanol dual fuel container ships. Intermodal shipbrokers said the order for 12 13,000 TEU container ships is split between Chinese shipbuilders Jiangnan Shipyard and Yang Jingyang Shipbuilding. The dozen will be dual fueled with methanol. The new builds are slated for delivery in 2026 and 2027. The order for new eco friendly ships is part of Ocean Network Express Green Strategy to safeguard a sustainable supply chain for the future and underscore the company's decarbonization plan. It's now time for our Word of the Day segment where we introduce words, phrases, jargons, terminologies that we often use in this industry so you can get familiar with them. Today we'll tell you what we mean by mixed cargo. Mixed cargo refer to two or more products carried on board one ship. Let us now take a look at the schedule of vessels that have berth in the ports of Tema and Takrade and at the anchorages of both ports as well as those expected in the coming weeks plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rates which you may need to know to clear your cargo with.
where we draw the curtain on another interesting edition of Iron Pot. We hope you've been informed and educated. Remember, all Iron Pot content can be found on our YouTube channel, Iron Pot. Please subscribe, like, give us feedback, and share our videos. Thank you for watching.